Welcome to another session on Counselor Business Innovation Campus. Today we are going to be looking at um, a little part on how money works and also about salary. And um, how people don't understand that if you don't understand how money works, you'll find out that most times before the month has run out, you have actually run out of the money you have. And also, why the people who succeed in whatever they are doing don't depend on their salary. So, I'll start with the example. Two, two months ago, a young man came to me and said, um, so I'm always broke. I'm one of the hardest working individuals in my company. And, um, but by the end of the month, those who work less than me get more than me. So, what do I need to do? And I asked him how much was his salary, he said about 100,000. I asked him, um, his company, how many, what does he do? He said he's a marketer. I asked him what was the slowest moving product in his company. He said, uh, no, I asked him if he had uh, met his target in the previous um, months. He said he had been always meeting his target. And I asked him, is there any slow moving product that your company has? And he said, yes. I said, okay, why not meet your boss and say, see, this is our slow moving product. Last year we did 100 cartons. So let's take it that this year we can also do 100 cartons. That I want you to give me a target on this product of on my own doing 200 cartons. But if I do 200 cartons for every carton I get, I sell, I get 5,000, 5,000 naira. He went to discuss with um, his boss. At the end of the day, they, they arrived at um, 2,000 for every carton he sells. Now, this thing is happening like three months ago. As at now, this guy is already half of this. So if you are now doing 2,000 times 100, how much is it any next time? So by a lot of time, people just come in and say all their eyes is on their, the salary they are on. But you don't understand that if your salary, if you want to earn more than your, your what is on your pay slip, you must always ask yourself, how can I increase the revenue of my company and also increase what I'm earning from the company? Which means you don't just say every morning you come to work and say, my, my tax is one. Um, you know, send mails. You just list the one, three, four, five. And when you do one, two, three, four, five that you're employed to do, what will your MD say? For this one, two, three, four, five, I'm paying you 100,000. So anytime you do this, you get your 100,000. The only way you can actually grow your income is for you now to come to your MD and say, see, I've looked at what we are doing. That we are doing this one, two, three, and um, it's giving us every month, let's say about um, 10 million. But I think that I have an idea that can help us get an extra 5 million. But if I bring this idea and we get this 5 million, can I get 10% of this money? Are we following? Because if all the ideas is coming from your MD on how to grow the business, so why would he want to make you earn more money? Yeah, that's one way. There's also another way. I was discussing with somebody and he said that um, the, he was working in a company and they were paying him about um, 100,000 um, a month. And another company came and offered him 500,000. But he told me he rejected the offer. 
Now, it will look strange that somebody will reject 500,000 baht. But assuming that where he's earning the 100,000, he does all the negotiation with their key um, supplier. And he does all the financial transactions for the company. In five years, if he wants to open his company, what do you think he will be earning? Will he still be on this 500,000? It's about understanding that it's actually value that you should be looking at, not the money that you're earning as a salary. Because you also need to understand the, the financial law, which is why a lot of people who earn salary are always broke. And if you don't understand it, your salary will never be enough for you. I've seen somebody that was earning, um, um, he was on 40,000 and he was increased to 50,000. But by the same time he was broke, that same time he was going to his MD, please, I need um, more money. It's because of a simple law that is called um, Parkinson's law. He says that as your income increases, your revenue will automatically increase to match it. For instance, now, um, I can assure you that the day we increase Dominic's um, salary, that's the day he will realize that this woman's food is giving him running stomach. And he suddenly realized that this pure, pure water that I've been drinking too, I don't think they've treated it very well. And he moved to bottled water. Yeah. <laughs> and when he moves, what happens to his income? He wipes it. At the end of the month, he will still be broke. <laughs> but the key point is that at the end of the month, because more cost is coming, you still be X, zero, at the end of the month. You know, if you know um, my, wife, uh, my wife's sister, every month, initially every month she was um, complaining that she doesn't know if it's village people. Because by the middle of every month, she's always broke. That once the money comes in, something always comes up to wipe it out. And I told her to do a simple thing. Open an automatic account where all the, once they pay you, I say open the accounts, don't, don't complete the registration process. Um, don't get ATM for it, don't get, yeah. Then tell them that immediately your salary is coming, 50% should be deducted and we'll go into that this thing. Within 10 months, she had 400,000 saved in that account. Because I can tell you that if you can live on 40,000, you can actually find a way of saving 10,000. If you are paid 20,000, you can actually find a way of saving 5,000. If you are paid 100,000, you can actually find a way but if you are seeing that money all the time, that still that 200,000 will not be enough for you. That 200,000 will not be enough for you. I'm saying this in the line of what we, we see every day with people we work with and also in the line of what we do here. Because what I'm saying is you should be innovative and look beyond your salary. You should be saying, okay, what extra value am I adding to the organization? And the mistake too a lot of people make is that um, so the story of the prodigal son, Bill, I know you know it. Okay, so the part that you don't know is the part about the elder brother. I'm very sure you don't know about the story of the elder brother. So whereby they say that um, when the younger brother came back, uh, yeah, they killed cow and were celebrating. Uh, when the young elder brother heard that um, he he when he heard that. They were celebrating his um, his, his Shayu younger brother. They said he got angry and refused to come in. 
Now, the elder brother made a critical mistake that most of us make when we are walking. And what was that mistake? They said the young man told his father, I've walked with you all these years, I've obeyed you, but you have never given me. He said you have never given me, but the question is, has he ever asked? So, have you ever asked that? See, for this number of years, I've not. For this number of years, I've been working faithfully with you. I've been delivering this result for you. I've been doing this. I deserve a good. <laughs> so, sorry. It's not about really, which is where. See the key thing, uh, see the key area is in, in action, which is I'm going to point out why, what the young, mistake the young man did. He has been working and delivering extra value beyond what he was asked to do. Now you ask yourself, assuming for instance you are working here and we've made um, 10 naira. Can we actually have made that 10 naira without you? And then what can we have made this thing 15 naira? And it's okay for this extra 5 naira. I want this percentage. Now, we also ask yourself now, looking at what we do in this organization, how have I made a contribution that will grow the revenue of the company beyond what you could have done without? My what my salary is earning for me because I'm saying this to us because I want us to actually. So there's this guy, um, Jim Rohn. Okay, let me not even go with Jim Rohn. Let me look at you. Remember that young lawyer that we wanted to interview, the one that um, said she was in Ida Aba or somewhere. I asked her when she was in Lagos, she was working for one of the biggest chambers in Lagos. You know how much her salary was? That five thousand. One of the biggest chambers. Now I try to find out why would not. And funny enough, it's not just most lawyers. Their salary, actually, young lawyers, is between thirty to fifty thousand. With all that's their suit, you see. Most of them, that's their salary range. Those who, are, who have, um, those that will get to 70,000 are those who have like five years experience. But there's a mindset that um, the owners of the chambers have that make them pay this low. And the mindset is simple. I'm, I expose you to, to all the um, judges. I expose you to all the cases and how they are carried out. And I also expose you to all the clients. Which means I'm actually training you and paying you. Which means if a young lawyer now has worked for five years, he could now say, see, I carry so much value, he now comes into for partnership with the guy. I can deliver this. So in exchange for delivering this, this is what I want. And it's also the mindset I want you guys to actually start to build. It's not about salary. It's about deliver, developing yourself such that you get to a stage where you can come in and say, um, I come with this value, but I expect this. You can come in and say, okay, we are currently not doing um, anything on um, digital marketing. So I can develop that platform. If I develop it 
and we start to generate sales now. We have we start to get clients that will manage their digital platform. Can we agree that for everything I, I bring in, apart from my salary, I get 10% of it? Okay, I've seen that we want to do um, trainings, but we've not actually actively started to market it. Okay, so I want to start to now be the person who will drive this um, session for unemployed um, graduates. So I think we should charge 5,000 for it. But for anybody I bring in, I want 1,000. Which means, if I can um, bring um, 100 people from that, I top of my salary, I have 100,000. Or I think we should charge 10,000 for it. And for that 10,000, um, um, for anybody I bring, I want 3,000. And for that 3,000, I know that I can attract from the platform I have, my personal platform, I can attract 100 people. 100 times 3,000 is how much? 300. And that brings us to another um, idea is about the money you have. What are you doing with it? I learned a secret about money that um, money is currency and is flowing. If you don't try to tie your money into an asset as generating revenue, it will just flow out of it. Which means you've been saving the, um, let's say, 20,000. 20, and in a year you have um, 200,000. What do you do with it? I can assure you that if you have this thing by December, this 200k, by January, it will be less than um, 2,000. Or you might ask yourself, so I have this 200,000, what do I do? You look around you, look at the, the supermarket on your street. You look at the supermarket on your street and you tell the owner of the supermarket that you know, see, I want to invest 200K in your business and every month you give me an interest of 5K. Have you tried it? With who? So what was your offer to them? What was your offer to him? Yeah. Yeah. Now, see also where you miss it. Is um, they say two poor men cannot help themselves. If somebody's maximum turnover is about um, 500,000 and you're giving the person 200K, he wouldn't know how to add value to it in his business. Which is what we discussed last time. That if the mental capacity I have is how to manage 100,000, if you give me 500,000, let me give you a practical example. Somebody has built his house to roofing level and um, he needed a loan to plaster it. He was given a loan of um, 5 million. And this man, when he got the 5 million, started to... At the end of the day, he realized that what he actually put in the house was 2 million. But he can't account for 3 million. So if somebody doesn't know how to manage, all he has managed is 500,000. If you are giving him 250, there's no way. Assuming, for instance, you take that 250 now, you go and meet um, Yeah. Or you meet um, Sonny Green. Or you meet Choice. 
Do you think they will be willing to take that 250 and give you 5,000 every month? Why not? No, but then look at the thing. That is why you need to actually expand your scope. So let's say he takes this thing. Let's say for him, for so you said that's your 250. Can give bring him um let's say 10 WC. Okay. And for each of them now, he makes um profit of five thousand. So your 250 can actually give him 50,000 per month. So all he needs is to give you 10% of the profit. If you want to earn bigger, you also need to operate with those who earn operate on a higher level. Because I'm assuring you that that's 250. If you leave it in your account and you don't have something where you tie it in, it has finished. <laughs> That's how Parkinson's law works. You just think that, okay, one thing will come. Before you know it, you wake up one day, you can't find the money again. And which is why when we are building this place, uh, which is, um, we'll talk about how to use um, credit. Because the mistake people make is that they tell you that um, you should not borrow. That's one of the worst lies you, you can assimilate into your body. Let me give you an instance, for instance. Let's say um, a bag of cement currently is, um, is 2,000, for instance. So when we started, the bag of cement was like 2,000. Okay? I go to a person who is selling um, cement. I say, give me 100 bags. So 100 bags is um, 200k, right? It means that at this particular point that is giving me this 200 bags, what I'm paying is 200k. But I, in, in 30 days, cement, so I'm owing this person 200k, right? In 30 days, cement grows to five. But what am I still paying the person? So if I had waited that I would raise cash to buy these 100 bags, how much will I be spending? But when you don't understand how to use credit, you'll be waiting till you have the money. And when you have the money, inflation has raised the price. Which was one of the things we did when we were building this, in this place. Almost all the materials we are using, we are moving it on credit. And as they were coming, we are raising money to pay because and at every particular point, 30 days to 60 days after we bought taking that thing, the price would have gone up. But how much were we owing the person? What we took it two months ago. The key thing about credit is servicing it. As long as you are servicing your credit, people will always want to do business with you. So I would Probably by next, by tomorrow, in the course of the of the training on how money works, we'll be looking at how the credit system works and how businesses leverage on it very well. Let's say, for instance, um, the guy that supplied us um, rod that we're using to do the work we are doing, he gave it to us at a ton at about 180k. Abi, for instance. Now, um, we tell him that, see, this 150, this thing, what we can give you now is um, 80k when you bring it. So we are owing him how much? 100k. Now, this 100k, you need to give us time, like um, two months to pay you off. Now, because we're giving him this thing, he gives us the one ton of rod. He now goes to the person supplying him. So probably he buys this. Um, so because we are taking it on credit, if we are paying cash, he would have given us to us at 160. But he's giving us at 180, right? Now the person who he, who he buys who he buys from normally says it to me him at um, 120. Okay? So he takes this our 80,000. Miss this person. See, I have um 80,000. Give me one ton. So he's going the person 40,000. So because he has given the person 80,000, the person supplies him the one ton. 
So now he still now has another one ton that he can sell for 160. Do you get? So for this one that he already has profit of how much here? 60,000 that is coming up. But still from our money, this 80,000 that we have given him, without him adding anything there, he has gotten another one. So even if he sells his cash now and get everything, he has an extra profit of how much? 40 plus here. How much is he making now in like two months? 100 here. So if you understand how the credit system works, you know how to leverage it. But if you don't understand it, and which is why this thing is purely for a business setup, because you have to do the credit system with something that can generate revenue. Because if you do it now, let's say um, Chica's parcel just, um, just came in, and um, Chica took the loan from GTB to buy the makeup. Abby, so let's say she took a loan of um, 10,000. Now the question is, because this, this uh, makeup is not generating any direct revenue, it's tying the 10,000 to Cheka. But assuming Cheka is selling the makeup, for instance, she takes the loan, buys the makeup at 10,000, sells it at, um, let's say, 20,000. And the person she buys, she sold it to, gave an advance of um, 10,000. She pays GTB and she has her 10,000. Does it make sense? It's when we understand this thing very well, you understand that the key is not in salary. The key is about understanding how the system and structures work so that you can actually put them to use in whatever you are doing. Are we making sense? So we'll be talking more on um, how money works in our lectures throughout this week and um, next week. So for those who want to join us, you can join us on um, our platform, send us a WhatsApp message on 090-2093-2096-5693. Any question before we wrap up? So, in servicing your credit, which is why a, a borrower who uses it for personal expense is a servant to the lender. Because once you get it and you consume it, it means you need to get the money from other places. Do you get? Like I said about the makeup. Check out takes 10,000 from GTB, buys the makeup and uses it on her face. But she's paying 10,000. Who says who? Do you, you can get, if you want now, 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 you can get 100,000 now. Now, now, without any this. Diamond Bank do it. Accents do it. <laughs> no, almost all banks. It's also about which is where knowledge is important. If you don't know, you'll be wallowing in ignorance. Like yesterday, somebody was saying, um, there was actually, I think what happened in the US that a man who was living in poverty didn't know that his grandfather um, bequeathed everything to him. Until one day, the I don't know how he the, the the so he received the will and just dumped it somewhere. He never read it. So one day, somebody was going through the this thing and opened it. I said, oh "Boy, have you gone through this thing?" That was when he realized how rich he was, but he was living in poverty. So you don't know. I'm very very sure that um, Access Bank is giving it. I'm very sure that most of these banks are giving it. So it's easy for somebody to just take that um, loan. But the way I'm going is, let's say it's still the 10,000. She takes it and uses it for makeup. It means that she must also one word the other to raise the 10,000. But if she has used it on a business transaction and makes like 15,000, this person might pay her 10,000, she pays back and she has her 5,000. 
it might take her like two weeks to get or one month to get the five thousand back but then she has nothing to lose and which is where the able businesses have the difference they target their key cost if they've assessed that okay if we give you this thing you pay us what you are paying us is they know what is spending is majorly their profit so that even if it comes in like about um two months it's already profit do you understand Bello, does it answer your question? Yes. Any other question? Okay, so um, we'll take it from tomorrow. And um, so part of the thing I believe is anybody who is working in any organization should um, look beyond the hand of his or her master and say, um, in this particular place, is there a, um, I think it's a robot, a place of peace for me within this particular place. How can I carve out an extra income for myself beyond what my paycheck is earning me? Tomorrow, tomorrow session, we'll look at somebody that um, he was working hard and somebody he felt was lazy was making more than him so he went to, to the md and said sir there's something about this business you're not telling me that is not about hard work that was when the md now sat him down and when he opened his eyes he saw that the money ritual is not when you kill somebody money ritual is when you have the internal knowledge for instance um OJ might tell his, um, which is what most of them do, tell his um, manufacturer, I can sell 100 cartons, 100 containers, but for the 100, I want 10 free. The bank man will say, no problem, because over there, they're getting almost free capital to do the production. So they send it to him. He can afford to sell it below the cost price. He sells it below the cost price, and he, what he's targeting is, for the 20 extra he's getting, five will cover the below cost price he's selling. So his own profit is the remaining 15. Do you understand? It's like magic, but it's about when you have the knowledge. So we'll see you guys tomorrow.